All right, let's talk about something that's pretty important to me. Uh, I'm a big, I, I like learning and talking about just like personal finance. And obviously I play professional Madden. Um, well, that's one of the things I do. And so I want to talk about kind of the finances of professional Madden, what goes into that. And I actually have a Twitter thread um, from about two weeks back uh, talking about this. So we're just going to expand upon this a lot, okay? Um, and the reason that, no, no, nothing I'm saying here is supposed to deter anybody from wanting to play Comp Madden. Cause I think Comp Madden's awesome. I think there's a lot of really good things I'm going to go into uh, when it comes to playing Comp Madden that I think reasons you should. But I think it's dumb to go in blindly and say, oh, I'm going to become a professional Madden player and that is what I'm going to do full time um, for however long. I think it's I think it's very stupid. So I just want to offer a different perspective and really talk about this. Again, this is something I'm a little bit passionate about. Uh, so the spread starts out. Uh, if you want, if you really want Comp Madden to be financially worth the amount of hours you have to put in to be great at the game, please make some kind of content. Your return on investment on each hour invested is 10x unless you're like one of 15 dudes. Basically, what I'm saying here is that the top 15 dudes, or so give or take, um, over the course of a few years, can make only playing Comp Madden worth their while financially. Like they will make a good amount of money from it, where it makes sense. Your return on your investment on each hour invested is basically me saying for everybody else, the amount of time that you put in in terms of labbing, in terms of scrimmaging, in terms of actually playing tournaments, in terms of team building, all that stuff, uh, watching film, any of that stuff that goes into Comp Madden is significantly worse than if that time went into you streaming. If that time went into you making YouTube videos, whether it be a TikTok, whether it be even make, you know, trying to grow your Twitter presence, whatever, whatever, Discord, whatever it might be. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm basically saying that the return on investment per hour for competitive players is really, really, really low. Uh, we'll go into that a little bit more here. So I, I continue to say, especially assuming Electronic Arts keeps the trend of only top eight finishes making any sort of real money, plus only the top eight getting EA stream exposure. I'd love to see a tournament this year with a chance of 32 people to get on EA streams, but it's unlikely, right? So basically, a couple years back, Competitive Madden used to have something called clubs, which a lot of you guys are familiar with, um, and you'd basically have 32 people who would get stream time. Actually, at times, it'd be 128 people even. Uh, a lot of people would get on EA streams and have a chance to really grow their brand through EA's exposure, right? You'd get tweeted out. Um, when I won the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Club, I got retweeted by them. I got I got tweeted by them. Um, I was on some EA stuff, et cetera, et cetera. And that was for making the top 32. I was actually even on stream uh, in the top 64 of that as well. Now, it's basically across the board, top eights. Meaning that to get any sort of big time exposure now you basically have to make a final eight of a tournament which is possible but it's very hard and it'd be really ignorant to not acknowledge the fact that even if you are a top eight player in a given year there's still a good chance you don't make that top eight you know it's just the way it's just the way sports are it's like were the Bengals really the second best team in the NFL last year uh, they could have easily lost to the Titans in the divisional round right like now, they had an awesome run. I, I love Joe, Joe Burr. But, I mean, it's just being realistic. You know what I'm saying? Like, they easily could have lost in the divisional round, and nobody would have known. It's the same idea here, right? Just because you have the potential to be top eight doesn't mean you are top eight is basically what I'm getting at here. And so this is kind of me just being upset about the fact that EA is not doing comp players any favors with this format. Now, I will say it's rewarding the top eight people a ton because they are making a lot of money um, being top eight. I think it's and all the way through top 16 is a good amount of money um, overall uh, on a year to year basis, but let's move on and let's talk about a little bit more nerdy number stuff right here. So in addition to this, so in addition to having less exposure, let's say you have an insane year and make $75,000 of MCS earnings. Now I don't know off the top of my head, but 75 K in one year, I'm pretty sure it's going to put you in the top 10, um, give or take. Let's say you make another 25,000 in money games and CFMs. Okay. So hundred K you made in a year. That is an amazing, that, that's a insane year. You are, you are, you have some dog in you. You making a hundred K. Okay. After taxes, that's about 75 K. Yes. Unfortunately, taxes are real. You, the taxes are real. Um, that is a top 0.0001% year. And being a realist, like realistically, again, even if you're that dude, you won't make that amount of money next year. It's very unlikely just because the game's too fluky. You know, that's why, um, that's why saying every single year, you know, teams are so grateful to get make it to the Super Bowl and you can't blow those opportunities like, again, the Bengals because you don't know when you'll ever get it back. I just got a notification on my phone, so my attention uh, just kind of went away for a second. So, 
if one year you make 100K and the next, which is a very good living, and then the next year you only make 25K, so you, you've made 125K total, which 25K in a year is still solid. Like it's still solid in comparison to everybody else. That's 125K over two years, cut it in half, and it's what, 62.3 or 62.5? Um, and it's like, oh, that's not nearly as much as 100K. Still good though, but continue on just to, just to kind of get that point or just to kind of give that give that insight to add on to this and i'm just rambling at this point yeah this is from june 29th um let's say lives are top eight only you make a cinderella run but lose off a fumble in the round of uh, the round of 16. if you don't have any sort of platform nobody knows this you get a cool check for about 2500 dollars, and you are forgotten and this is one of my biggest issues with them lowering the brackets from 32 people getting exposure to only eight people getting exposure um it's it's really frustrating for this because you can have an amazing run make it to a final 16 beat a lot of really good players you could beat a lot of really good players on that run to 16 and lose off of a hell game fluke you got cheated whatever it might be you might have just lost and it's like dang your cinderella run you know your date in ohio and you guys finally lost it's like amazing run but because there's no exposure for that, if you don't have any sort of platform for yourself, it's, who cares? Um, and that's that, that's honestly the fact of the matter. Who cares? Like, it, nothing comes from it. You get $2,500, which is cool, but because everything is on Ultimate Team now, realistically, by this point in the year, you've probably spent at least 1000 on your Mutt Team, so you've made 1500 1500 Again, taxes are a real thing, minus taxes, 1250 And it's like, so you made $1,250 for how many hours invested into that and again if you're like most man players myself it's a lot of hours um if you're serious about wanting to play comp madden and make an actual return on your investment you need to be spending some of your lab time towards learning how to build a brand if you're just playing for fun and just trying to see how good you are just play the game dude that's awesome uh that's how i started that's how you should start you should you shouldn't immediately start playing Madden. And be like i want to make as much money as possible from it it's not that's stupid you're not going to enjoy it that much but if you're saying, hey, I love Madden and I want to do this for five years. I want to I wanna do this for five years and see what can happen. You have to, and, and to, to be able to do it full time, mind you, you have to find a way to be able to monetize yourself outside of just straight competing. And now some people, there are some exceptions. Some people have done some amazing jobs of making really good money through CFMs, um, through money games, stuff like that. And that's very fair. Uh, but if you're trying to be in this for the long haul, which... In my like, it depends what your goals are. I think Madden's an awesome side hustle. I really do. I say it a lot in my streams. Excuse me. I think Madden's an awesome, an awesome side hustle for uh, whether whether you just you have a job and you're just kind of dicking around on the side. You have to be good at Madden. You just want to dick around, and have fun. That's awesome. Um, that's how I used to treat Madden as well before I went full time. Uh, or if you're in college and you're just like, hey, it's kind of like a cool way to make a little bit of extra money on the side. That's cool. That's that's actually awesome. Just yeah, comp is an comp is an awesome side hustle. But talking to people uh, who want to go take that next step into being full time, especially on the competitive side of things, it's like the the value that having any sort of brand can bring to you is literally immeasurable. It, it, if I didn't have what I've been able to thankfully build up, and I used an opportunity from EA to kick off what I've built by now. Um, you know, I literally did not stream at all until I made a club championship. And then I started streaming right after that. Mind you, before I made the club championship, I was in the role of, I'm just going to play Comp Madden as a side hustle while I went to school and I worked at FedEx. Um, and then once I won, I was like, oh, here's exposure. Let me try to capitalize on this because I might not ever win another club championship. Um, which to be fair, I never did. Um, I, I just, I, and it's not, it doesn't even need to be like full on, hey, you need to stream every single day. You need to upload YouTube videos all the time. You need to X, Y, and Z. I, even streaming sometimes, stream stream, a turn, stream Weekend League, dude. Like if you're going to play Weekend League, I'm being dead ass. If you're going to play Weekend League and you are really good at the game, right? You're getting 20 plus wins in Weekend League. There's no reason not to stream it. There's a bunch of awesome streamers who literally started out that same way, who have grown into being pretty known figures in the community um like i started out streaming i believe for the most part like my dc ladders my uh draft champions was a was a tournament in the mcs in madden 20 and you had to qualify for it 
and it was like a super long grind to qualify for i just streamed all my games i just said okay i have to play these games anyway i might as well stream it it doesn't need to be anything super like um you know you gotta have a whole plan or whatever but i am such a big big proponent of or advocate of any kind of content i think it helps everybody in madden too and that, that's why you see some of these box i'm trying to think of, it's ryan garcia who's a huge uh who's a big boxer he works a lot with like the logan paul guys and you see him building up his you see him purposely posting youtube videos and being big on Inst or and purposely taking instagram seriously and the reason isn't because he loves making youtube videos that's not why he loves fighting he's he's talked about it um i believe that's his name ryan garcia but all that stuff makes when he does fight so much more of a big deal which ultimately ultimately only benefits him and god forbid if for some reason he can't he doesn't want to fight or can't fight whatever whatever um he has an opportunity to continue being in the boxing scene full time full time and be able to do that whereas if he took a different approach a lot of boxers uh, fighting in this instance is a great example actually where they you know they, they only hone in on their craft they only focus on boxing and when they're done boxing they're done boxing it's like okay well what do you have to fall back on now what do you what do you do you know what what's that next step and again it depends a lot on your goals i don't want to like tell any like you know I, I i definitely like people dick like if you're just dicking around the game having fun playing it as a side thing absolutely just have fun with it dude um that's again how i literally started um but if you like want to take the next step and like be especially you want to take comp seriously like you were like really saying, hey, I want to take competitive man seriously. I strongly believe that you sh you have to begin to even just try to stream, just try try to tweet, try to tweet, try to do anything. Get your get your name out there a little bit. It'll benefit you so much. Um, again, if I wouldn't have started streaming after I won my Bucks Club, uh, which again I came from the position of just doing it as you know d dicking around, and I want to uh, I just happened to win Bucks Club. Um, if I didn't come from, like, if I didn't start streaming, I would not have a YouTube channel. I would not be streaming still. Um, I would not be doing anything. So it's just worth it. It keeps your options open. I'm a big, I'm a big advocate of keeping your options open, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I enjoy talking about this kind of stuff, though. If you guys do enjoy it, let me know. If you guys disagree, also let me know. Um, yeah. <laughs>